<clears throat> I want to <clears throat> have a very long, uh, playfully call it a puritanical title uh, to the sermon this morning, and that is uh, <clears throat> Schooled by the Savior, Schooled, Shielded, Sent with a Song to Our Sons Because Time is Short. I'm going to get all that out of this text, I believe. Amen. One more time. Schooled, shielded, sent with a song to our sons because time is short. <clears throat> if you <clears throat> study the Bible, you cannot, there, there are a group of people today who uh, want to throw away the Old Testament. And yet the Bible clearly tells us in Romans chapter 15 that the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort, and we, you know, we might make it through, if you will. And then in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about the fact that the things were written aforetime for our admonition or our warning, okay, that we wouldn't fall into the same issues that they fall into. And, and I don't know that anybody else uh, says it, though I'm sure there's nothing new under the sun. But I feel like that the Old Testament provides us physical pictures of spiritual battles that we face in the New Testament. And uh, <clears throat> there's a, no matter what we're talking about, there's a ditch on both sides of the road, okay? Uh, and I can prove that to you scripturally. Uh, Jesus Christ had enemies spiritually and politically to his right and to his left. To his right spiritually were the Pharisees they wanted to add to the Word of God. And to his left spiritually were the Sadducees they wanted to take away from the Word of God. If they couldn't explain it, then they didn't believe it. They didn't believe in life after death. They didn't believe in the crossing of the Red Sea because these things could not be explained. Uh, politically, you had to his right the Zealots uh, who wanted to kill all the Romans. would just kill them all, let God sort it out. And to his left... Uh, you had the Herodians eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die was kind of their mindset. And Jesus told the disciples to beware of the, the leaven, which is basically the sin of all of these different groups. we got to be careful about them, not to fall off into those ditches on either side of the road. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, the old paths, if you will, a lot of people, when they talk about the old paths, they're talking about 1960, 1970, all right? Uh, I'm talking about this book right here when I say the old paths, all right? <clears throat> There, are, There's a ditch on both sides of the road concerning traditional things uh, within the church, okay? And there's a group of people, within, even within Baptists now, there's a group of people, if it's traditional, it can't possibly be right. And then there's a group of people, uh, within, even within the Baptist ranks now, that if it's traditional, it's got to be right, even if we can't find it in Scripture. Well, that's a ditch. We've got to stay out of the ditches and stay in the middle where God's word stands, all right? Uh, <clears throat> when we look at uh, the Great Commission, and you say you should pray. Man, I've been praying now all the way from Mississippi, all right? I'm ready to go. When we look at the Great Commission, the Great Commission was given to the church, okay? Now, uh, there's some argument about what the church is, um, but the word church or churches is found in your Bible 117 times in 114 verses. And all of those but maybe two, it is clearly talking about either the word is plural and it's talking about a group of local assemblies or it is singular and it's talking about a particular local assemblies. And the Great Commission was given to the church, okay? If we talk about all the churches in the world combined, I prefer uh, the term you find in Ephesians about uh, the family of God in heaven and in earth, okay? But <clears throat> even those people who, who emphasize the universal church, they call it, still know that there's an importance to the local church. And the Great Commission was given to the local church. It wasn't just given to the, to the apostles or to the pastors of today, the missionaries of today. If you're breathing and you're born again, the Great Commission was given to you. Okay, when we look at the Great Commission, all this is introduction. I'm going to get to Psalm 144 in a minute, I promise. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at the Great Commission... Uh, you see the word power twice, Lynn. Uh, you see in, in, in Matthew 28, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And that word is the same word we find in Romans chapter 13 to obey the powers that be because God ordained those powers. It's talking about his authority. We see the word power in Acts chapter 1. You shall receive power. Power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. That word power there, I believe he's talking about what we say, another New Testament word, unction. It's talking about the Spirit's power. I can't do anything for you this morning. If the Spirit of God doesn't speak to your heart, then uh, I, 
You've wasted your time. We've got to have, in any message, we've got to, it's his authority. So if you disagree with something I say, I don't have to be offended, Paul. If somebody disagrees with me, I was able to preach in a school in Canada where it's against the law for me to preach, and, and, and I was able to do so. I think part of the reason was because I said, if you disagree with what I have to say, your problem is not with John Stuart Hallman. Your problem is with the Word of God. Amen. We want to take offense if somebody doesn't believe what we believe. We can't do that. It's His authority. His power, His authority, His power, His strength to the message. And then uh, we're even given the message. It's predetermined what we preach. In Luke, He said, repentance and remission of sin to be preached in His name, beginning at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part. So we know what we're supposed to preach. And in His power, His authority, His power, His strength, His passion... John 20, 21 says, As the Father sent me, Brother Hugh, as the Father sent me, so send I you. Now, neither me nor you were born of a virgin. It's impossible. Amen. Only Christ was born of a virgin. I think what he's talking about there is we sit inside the walls of our churches and we complain about society. We complain about how the, the, the country's going to hell in a handbasket and we're not doing anything about it. But when Christ saw them, saw the people that were going to crucify him, Stanley, he was moved with compassion. Now, some people say it means he cried. Others say it means he threw up. Maybe he threw up and cried. This much I know, he didn't sit inside the walls of the church and gripe about them. He did something about it. He went to the cross to pay for the salvation of those people that he was moved with compassion for. Amen. It's his passion, his power. His sermon, his predication, his preaching. We're supposed to take the gospel to every person, every creature, Mark 16 says. Of every people, every nation. That's not talking about the United States. That's talking about the Cherokee Nation, the Choctaw Nation, the, the, the Mossy Nation. Go around the world. Every person of every people in every place. And yet, I stand before you and give you information that you already know. The local churches are failing as a whole. This one's growing, and I'm glad to see it. But as a whole, Tom Rainer is a Southern Baptist. He's over the uh, <coughs> the bookstore, Lifeway, I believe. He's done some statistics. And last year, Southern Baptist Convention started 479 churches. Boy, amen, right? Praise God. And yet, now... All the different local bodies that make up the Southern Baptist Convention lost 78,000 members last year. Hmm. So you picking on the Southern Baptist? No, y'all just keep better records than anybody else. Amen. <laughs> and there's not another group doing any better. I was talking with Sam about this, and I said, do you think these, these stats that uh, Dr. Rainer has are, are legit and he said yeah our goal for the state of Tennessee is 25,000 baptisms at, by the year 2025 and in 1950 the state of Tennessee had 50,000 baptisms so our goal is half of what we did 70 some odd years ago I tell you again as a as a nation our local churches are failing to carry out the Great Commission. <clears throat> I could go on down that road a little bit, but I believe the Lord wants me to get into Psalm 144. I say again that the Scriptures say that the Old Testament is for our learning. Now, when we read Psalm 144, you see a lot of military people with Psalm 144.1 tattooed on their arms. And, and Robert E. Lee <clears throat> had that, said that verse was very important to him. And David, I think, is actually talking about militarily here. But I think there's a very applicable lesson for you and for me. Let's read Psalm 144. I forgot my glasses, so if I misread it, you'll have to forgive me. Blessed is the, excuse me, blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. 
my goodness, my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning, and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows, and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Rid me, and deliver me out of the great waters from the hand of strange children. Did you notice that term? whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I praise, sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, and that our daughters may be as cornerstones uh, polished after the similitude of a palace, that our garners, that word would be granaries today, may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our street that our oxen may be strong to labor and that there be no breaking in nor going out and that there be no complaining in our streets happy is that people that is in such a place yea happy is that people whose God is the Lord dear Heavenly Father I pray today that you would give me clarity of thought and clearness of speech and I pray that you would keep me from being too long winded uh, so that the minds wander Lord I pray that you would just Use every word, Lord. I pray that you would uh, guide every word. I pray that you would do what I cannot do, and that's speak to hearts, Lord. I know there are believers sitting here today. I pray that you would purge us of sin, prune us of unfruitfulness, Lord. And, Lord, if there should be one here lost today, then I pray you would redeem that soul. We pray these things in Christ's name and for his honor alone. Amen. Listen. <clears throat> There, there are a lot of church plans. I'm proud to know about these 479 churches uh, that were started last year. I know that there are several groups who are in church uh, planting and church revitalization, things of this nature. <clears throat> it's been 20 years since I uh, <clears throat> went to school at Crown across town there. And back then, there were some fellows that were headed out to plant churches, and some of the old, some of the older preachers that would come around, almost kind of hard on them, because they wanted to raise a little support to go start a church. And well, I started a church in 1950 or 1960 or maybe in the 1970s, and and nobody supported me. I just went out and got a job and and started. Okay. It's not 1950. It's not 1960. It's not 1970, and times have changed a little bit. I pray it's not a rabbit trail, but honestly, the cost of living is not that drastically higher than it was back then. We just have so many things added to our list of necessities. We have to have a phone, not just a phone, but a cell phone, not just a cell phone, but a smartphone, not just a smartphone, but unlimited, unlimited connectivity. We've got, in, if you figure up all the insurances most of us pay in a year, it's more than people made in the 1970s. Amen. Okay? Th things have changed a little bit. But more than those sorts of things, think about this for a second. Uh, we mentioned this in Sunday school, the difference between when Brother Hugh was in school and when I was in school and today. When I was in school, I went to school in four different counties, one in Alabama and three in Mississippi. I went to four different schools, clearly. Twelve years of school, I knew one kid from a broken home. The year after I graduated, a boy I played ball with, his parents got divorced then. One. Two, if you count the boy that's parents got divorced a year after. I polled some kids last week that are in high school, Noah's age and younger. And you know what they could say? I asked a, a black child. I said, how many of your friends, acquaintances, everybody you know, how many live with the mom and dad that conceived them? He thought for just a second. He said, 
won. I mean, he was confident, Farrell. There was no doubt in his mind. There was only one person he knew from that kind of home. So then, okay, well, you know, blacks, whites, there's a big difference there. Okay, so I turn around and I ask a white kid. I said, one. I don't, didn't have any Asians or American Indians to ask, okay? So, I mean, I ask everybody that was present, any kind of group there that could be represented. You know, when I was in school, everybody had a basic knowledge of Scripture. Amen. Everybody had a basic understanding that God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And that God created male and female created He them. Amen. Do you know, these kids don't understand that today. There, there's, there's a girl I teach who said... They said I was going to marry somebody like my daddy. That's why I'm a lesbian. But you think about it. I mean, some of us had some tough times growing up, but I never had my daddy point a loaded gun at my head. Honestly, I don't care how rough your upbringing is. If you're above the age of 30, most of us have no concept what these kids face. You know, in my generation, and, and, and you go back to even before Hughes' generation, people were trying to question. We called it the modernist movement. And they were questioning uh, truths that we have accepted for hundreds of years. Some of that was for our good. Between 1890 and, and 1940, there's a lot of good changes came into the world. I mean, we got toilet paper, amen. I mean, there's some important things that came about. Automobiles, uh, phones. You wouldn't have a cell phone if Graham Bell hadn't come up with the phone. I mean, there's a lot of good things that happened. And yet they, they questioned also the virgin birth and the inerrancy of Scripture and so forth. And, and, and we're worried about those sorts of things. These kids that y'all go to school with, they're trying to figure out if they really exist or if they're some emoji created by an alien race. You thinking I'm kidding, but I know some kids that seriously ponder those sorts of things. Do we really exist or are we just some version of reality that some other thing created? You, we can't. Okay, so the ditch is on both sides of the road. We've got to figure out how to reach them, right? But we can't compromise the message. Now, see, the one ditch over here is they know the church is in the community. They'll come if they want to. And then the ditch over here is we've got to change everything to get them to come. Well, first off, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but the, we need to be schooled, right? It's the Lord that teaches us the war. We're in a warfare. Amen. First off, the Great Commission is not y'all come. It's y'all go. Go ye. Second off, everybody's busy trying to pay for all these things that whether we can argue whether they need them or not. But everybody, including us, honestly, uh, the ladies in Sunday school were talking about giving time to people. And most of us are so busy trying to pay for all these insurances and all these cell phones and all these different things, we ain't got time to give anybody else, let alone the Lord. We, we need God to come on the scene and teach us how to reach these people. And it's only been about 20 years I heard somebody preaching against being online, uh, preaching against the Internet. I, I'm, I'm about two-thirds of the way through being Dr. Hallman. And all of my classes are online. We've got to figure out how to use the Internet. We can't change the message. But we need to figure out how to use Twitter Instagram. Now, you know, the kids say, the millennials say that Facebook's for old people like their parents, okay? So, but I'm looking at a few old people like my parents. So, <clears throat> though I'm a far cry from a millennial, whatever social media you're on, ask God how you can use it. Ask God how you can reach out to these people that are so busy. My daddy and probably countless other preachers said 50 years ago, people want to know how much you care before they care how much you know. We need God to school us on how to war. And this, what we do, I have forgotten your name, sir, but 
What we do is we sit around inside the walls of the church and complain about society or we sit around and wish for the days of Roosevelt or wish for the days of Reagan, my generation. And do you know the Bible says that's not only unwise, it's wrong. What did Mordecai tell Esther? For such a time as this. Amen. Before he said, let there be light, he knew when you'd be born and what generation he put you in, and this is the generation he wants you to reach. Amen. Our forefathers have done a good job, and we've dropped the ball. Amen. We need God to teach our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Amen. Hey, if you do it, they're going to talk about you. And I learned a long time ago, Stanley, that Christ was silent before his accusers. I think it was B.R. Lakin that told uh, Jerry Falwell, it could have been somebody else, but it's still a truth. There is no need to defend you. If you're busy serving Jesus, don't worry about defending yourself, Bo, because your friends don't need it and your enemies won't believe it. You let God defend you. That's what he says. He is my goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust. We've got to let him defend us. Schooled by the Lord. Shielded by the Lord. Look, if you don't want people to talk about you, Paul Stewart, you sit down and do nothing. But if you're doing anything for Christ... You're going to be the bad guy on somebody's Twitter feed today. That's just all it is to it. But we can't worry about that. We've got to be schooled by the Savior, shielded by the Savior, and sent. He keeps talking about these strange children. What are strange children? Strange, when, when we say strange today, we think they're weird, right? A stranger is a foreigner. And we sit inside the church and feel like, our nation, not, I'm not talking about immigration now. I'm just talking about the change in my lifetime. We feel like everybody's strange. Do you know what the solution is? It's Jesus. We were strange at one time, but now I'm a child of the king. Amen. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasure's laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I, I'm, I'm a citizen of a foreign country. We are sent to these people that we see as strange. And what they, if they're born again, just like when you were born again, they become joint heirs with Jesus. They become native sons. Sent, schooled, shielded, sent. With a song. That's some fine music we heard earlier. I appreciate it. Do you know why most people don't want what we have? Let's think on that for a second. There's been some preachers I know and some church members I knew in my lifetime that were so godly. People said, I don't know what he's got. I don't know what she's got, but I need it. Oogie, I believe people don't say that about us because we are so stinking grumpy. I'm not talking about you in particular. I just like to keep people on, on their toes. I have to call the people whose names I can remember. I can't remember everybody's, but yours kind of sticks out in my mind. <clears throat> hey man, I'm Baptist with a big B. I'm Baptist born and Baptist bred, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. I'm going to heaven because of the blood of Christ, but I believe that we hold the doctrines that the apostles held when we preach what has been preached in Baptist churches for hundreds of years. But I recently wrote a a United Pentecostal pastor. I said, I just want you to know you got two members that I see every day, Monday to Friday, and they are the picture of joy in Jesus. 
I'm talking about come to school with that long hair, no makeup, skirts to the floor, and smiling, carrying that Bible. Where's the Baptist like that? And I know there's some down here at South Doyle, but I mean to tell you we need more of them. We need more people that are so, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Where are we? We need to be, Carrie's email, heart's new song. What's the new song in your heart, CJ? What's the new song in your heart? If I've come to know the creator, the redeemer, there should be a song in my heart. You know, people talk about, how do you know if you feel with the spirit? Now, we know these UPC folks, they think that it's talking in tongues. I love them, but I disagree with them. When I read this book, there's two things to let me know if I'm filled with the spirit. I'm speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and I'm telling everybody else about my Savior. That's the two ways I know if I'm filled with the Spirit. So ask yourself, don't tell me. Ask yourself, am I schooled? Am I shielded? Am I sent? Do I have my song? Hmm? The songs out of that celebration hymn is a whole lot better than Panic at the Disco. Amen. That's a group if y'all don't know that. I suppose it's a soloist, but anyway, <clears throat> that's a whole lot better than Florida, Georgia line, any of that garbage. <laughs> Sent with a song. The end of this talks about satisfaction, talks about our granaries being full. If we continue the application, our churches will be full. And there won't be breaking out. There won't be breaking in. The satisfaction. Hmm. Go back up here. We, we want to wait. For some reason, it's just like a diet, you know? My wife and I, we laugh about starting diets because of my many soup sizes, all right? In 30, 20 years of marriage coming up this Wednesday, you almost had a good anniversary. Wednesday's ours, you know? Uh, you know, I've been from 230 to 280 to 190 and all in points again and again. <clears throat> I said, Monday, I'm starting a diet. And she'll quote Exodus to me. She'll say, hmm, just like the Pharaoh, one more night with the frogs, right? I said, tomorrow. And that's what we do about our spiritual lives. Right. I didn't tell you anything this morning. If you're saved, I didn't tell you anything you don't know. The way we witness, the, you know, it, it, it can't change. I mean, the way we went, the method we might use, but the message can't change. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm using Twitter or if I'm talking to somebody face to face. I tell them, you have to know Jesus loves you. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you believe on him, you won't perish, but you will have everlasting life. You have to understand that though he loves you, you're a sinner separated from that love. The, the Bible says all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. In fact, Romans chapter 3 and the Proverbs tell us you can't do anything right. You can't say anything right. You can't even think anything right. You can't worship right Amen. until you come to know Christ. Amen. Right. It says the plowing of the wicked, the sacrifice of the wicked, the prayer of the wicked, the thought of the wicked is sin. Amen. Can't do anything right. I mean, if we compare ourselves to one another, we're going to come out on top. But when we compare ourselves to the standard, Jesus Christ, we all fall short. We all come short of the glory of God. And, and worse than that, that falling short, that coming short, that means that we are condemned. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ died for us. Christ died for you. Christ died for you. Christ died for you. We go around the world, and he died for us. And there has to come a time when they call on him as Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a supreme authority. And it doesn't matter how we witness. That's our message. We can't change that message. But we need God to teach us how to witness in 2018. How to figure out how to get around our busy schedules. Because if you're, if you're under the age of 70, I'm guessing you're as busy as I am. 
Most people can't, can't retire until they're in their 70s anymore. We're busy. Get around our busy schedule and get around their busy schedule to reach them for Christ. Man, why is it important? Because time is short. 32 years ago, I was recognized as a graduate. I seem, I've been married to Denise coming Wednesday be 20 years. It seems like I've been married all my life. I mean, I, I, I can't remember life without Denise and, and don't want to look forward to a time where one of us might have life without the other. What does it say here? Let's use the words of Scripture. Man, his days, talk about man, his days are as a shadow that passeth away. Listen, i got to come in for a landing. I got a hush. One preacher said 243. 243. That's a good rifle. It's a small caliber rifle, but you can actually you can actually compete in sniper in sniper uh, in long range shooting competitions with a 243. Say, so what's that got to do with preaching? Chronicle, the, the chronicler wrote for us, if my people, which are called by my name, shall lumber themselves, seek my face, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear their land, heal their land. And there's a, there's a third one there that escapes me. We want God to do something. But we got to do something. We've got to school. I'm going to give you my title, and then I'm going to shut up and pray. Schooled, shielded, sent with a song to strange sons because time is short. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father.